I'm Mary L. Jessup, Chief Science and Medical Officer of the American Heart Association. I'm so happy today to have Dr. Pat O'Gara, who's Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and a cardiologist, and importantly for our conversation today, is the chair of our Joint Committee on Guidelines. These are the ACC, American College of Cardiology, and the American Heart Association Guidelines. We've been doing guidelines with the American College of Cardiology for over 20 years. And this past year, we went through a big process that we called guideline optimization. Pat, Dr. O'Gara, why did we have to go through this process? Good question, Marielle. I think that we were overdue as two organizations to think more strategically about where we were and where we need to go with regard to guideline development and guideline dissemination. I think we had been looking inward over the past several years to the extent that we were focused more on process than we were on the outcome of developing guidelines based on evidence and getting these guidelines out to the community and making a difference at the point of care. And as you know, from your leadership role at the Heart Association as the Chief Scientific Officer, we were under and remain under quite a great deal of pressure with regard to making sure that our guidelines are trustworthy, making sure that we have processes in place that can convince the end user that the evidence has been very carefully sifted and adjudicated and peer reviewed and that recommendations are made in as transparent a way as possible and that we abide by principles of conflict and principles with regard to relationship with industry. And I think in addition to the trustworthiness that we need to exhibit to our communities, we need to hold ourselves accountable for turning guidelines around in a more rapid fashion and making guidelines easier to access. So timeliness, correct. trustworthiness, and what was the third? Accessibility. Accessibility. Yeah. And, and so our community, our two, our, our two organizations felt that we weren't doing all of those or that we could do them better. I think that's fair to say that we could do them better. And I think that not only were our community saying that, but also ourselves and our leadership. And I think that we've learned a great deal with respect to what it takes to develop a trustworthy guideline in a rapid uh, period of time and what it takes to disseminate this appropriately. And as a consequence of our several month uh, pr process by which we attempted to lay out a strategic plan, we came to the realization that we need more resources. We came to the realization that we need to govern ourselves differently that we needed to establish clear lines of reporting and accountability, and that we also need to be careful about how it is that we interact with societies with whom we partner in the development of these guidelines. So what will this mean for the future? Um, are we going to teach a new generation how to write guidelines, or is the process completely different? Well, I think that there will be a process by which we will provide writing committee members with the opportunity to learn the tools of the trade with regard to guideline development. And I think we've learned a lot from our younger generation in this process, from our fellows in training and from our early career professionals who access information electronically and access information on the fly and multitask. The last thing that they would like is to receive several hundred pages of a printed document with thousands of references to sift through. They want information that they can access more readily at the point of care that's provided to them in a bite of information and that's all that's necessary for them to make a good clinical decision. So what the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association is promising to our clinicians, our cardiovascular clinicians, that we'll have guidelines that are timely, that are trustworthy, and are accessible. Absolutely, and we are certainly going to hold ourselves accountable to do just that. It is our intention to 
reduce the time allotted for guideline development from 28 months to 14 months and to produce four guidelines each year. Sounds like we've got a lot of work ahead we of do, us. We do, and we're grateful for your leadership now and into the future. Thank you, Pat. You're welcome.